Um, yeah, on <laughs> that episode that I uh, recorded with you, oh, I've got the same t-shirt as you, I think. Um, well, here one. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to give one of them. Ah, uh, yeah, I like that. That's very good. I, uh, I, had some chat, I had some chap. Uh, were you my first? You're my first, weren't you? You're my first. Yeah. <laughs> um, I had some chap going, uh, I can't wait for your podcast, mate, but... Um, could you make of, could you make of not eight on, on, on the pack, podcast? So I just immediately blocked him. It's like, there's no constructiveness going on there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like not. Honestly, literally, I saw. Because I didn't I saw, find it annoying. Um, I saw one of my mates probably about two two weeks after I'd done it. It was absolutely smashed. I'd just gone to get a Nando's. And um, saw him outside Nando's. He was absolutely smashed. And he was just like. I listened to about 20, 20 seconds of your podcast and I just got fucking annoyed with you. Like, why the fuck are you eating? It's like, yeah, I didn't find it too is what bad. I do. I didn't find it too bad, to be fair. Nah, I don't know. I guess, really? like, what? Shit, there's a, there's, isn't there a phobia? Uh, oh, what? People eat? Someone eat? Yeah. It's a phobia around me because you've got ASNR as well. That's it. I like that sort of stuff, though. Like, if someone, someone might have been right into it. Yeah. Yeah, it might have been. Joe, keep keep cheering, keep cheering. Just just watch that first two minutes on repeat. <laughs> Stop. Um, everybody, welcome to our first episode of a slight of a, a bit of um, what would you call this? A segue. We've segued. This is seg- segue, right? Yeah. I don't know how that. I, I don't know where that term came from because I've been on a segue, but I don't know what that's about. Um, I had a up that with my missus the other day because she thought a segue was literally just like. What you go on? Yeah. And you, I was like, no, you can segue a conversation. You can, you can segue. So we're segging it, and with this is a resident nerds show. And what, what I wanted from this, instead of a, which by the way I absolutely love and will always be doing, obviously, one episode a week, no doubt, of me and one other guest, interviewee style chit chat, just one on one basis. I want to get a group of us on resident nerds on a weekly, bi weekly basis, and just chatting shit. Because people love that. I do, if I'm honest. Yeah. I want to I want to I want to sit on that stairmaster and just plug away for an hour, just watching bodybuilders, whoever, just chat crap. Yeah, same. I mean I like. that's that's what I did all the way through. What does that what does that, last couple last couple of card here? What does that mean what, what who we are? Are we just really boring? We like watching people eat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, no, because when you're on prep, you're just watching the things that you crave, right? Did you did you find this on prep? Did you how was your attention span? Uh, you'd have to ask my missus <laughs> probably, probably not a lot my attention span's pretty shit on the best of times so I'm hey, prep it was horrendous I couldn't watch a movie I'd stick I'd stick Potter on in the background I couldn't watch it you know there's a difference between sticking a movie on and watching a movie am I right oh, talking about movies has anyone seen Spider-Man yet I've not seen it yet I've not oh, seen it I am going to say this cried three times Sammy how many times have you cried <laughs> I didn't cry, but almost. I got oh, I got a lump in my throat a couple of times. Hey, yeah, honestly, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. One, it's best MCU film I think I've ever seen. Yeah, if I'm honest, I've, I said this. I said, it, it's either because Iron Man one has always been my favourite Marvel so far. Anyway, um, yeah. this is I think this has actually topped that. This is the best Marvel film I've seen. Yeah, yeah, I can't think of anyone that was better than that. That I think, was I th- incredible. I think it got like a ninety-six percent Rotten Tomatoes rating. Four percent of people are dicks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Four four percent of the four 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 percent of the voters were children that couldn't go watch the movie or something. <laughs> yeah, the the age range isn't down to my my age. Um, how's it how's it been then, boys? Any news? What's what's new? Nothing really, me. Um... I don't know what it's been like with you lot, but it's been quite quiet with me work-wise at the moment. I think everyone's kind of just given up for Christmas. Um, probably, again, start again, New Year. Yeah. New Year, New Me, all that bollocks. Do you know what I used to do with them um, when I was a PT anyway? And I don't do it so much now, that much anyway. In terms of my PT clients, I used to do like a like a challenging two weeks, like a, a, the last half of December moving into the new year and through Christmas we would completely flip training on its head if you're a bodybuilder we'd start doing powerlifting for two weeks 
if you're a powerlifter, we do bodybuilder stuff. If we do CrossFit, if we would all sorts of just the complete opposite, because it just like woke them up and they're like, oh, wicked, I love training. And they're equally as motivated. So it's just like little ways you think, right, okay, they're going to want to dull it down now and can't be bothered. I'm going to spice it right up a week before that. So they won't even not want to, if that makes sense. It's just tactics, isn't it? To be able to still earn and still help. And you have to be quite, it's almost like a chess game, isn't it? Just be like, oh, that's happening then. Yeah. I'll start doing you, this. You've got, you got to really get into the mind of the client. Like, yeah. with, with the experience of being a PT and being in the industry, taking yourself through all the processes, you can click on to little clues that they're starting to fade. And then it's just doing exactly as what you've just said, just switching up training just for a couple of little couple of weeks. Yeah. Reignite it all. Yeah, I did um what about you, Sammy? Do you are you so are you coach PT st- or are you all online? Because I know obviously you do you want to um, posing with people, don't you? I'm all online except posing. Oh yeah. Mm, yeah. Can you do, can you do posing like remotely? I can do, I do posing online and I'll do it at one-to-one at the, uh, my, I've got two venues. I can do it at Crowford Weights and I'll do it at um, uh, Stackhouse in Rayleigh. Yeah. What, what, do do you, the weekend. what do you prefer, doing it face-to-face or online? Oh, 100% face-to-face. Because <laughs> there's just certain things that like, um, you just can't teach people on on an ebook or a video call and that I've, I've had a couple of guys and unless you can get hands on some people need the physical touch to just yeah. move them into position as they do it like this yeah you know so to, to a lot of people they can pick it up but not to everyone so yeah so some guys some guys are like robots when they want to dance aren't they they just naturally aren't very fluid like if you go out on a night out they're like you know, bop, bop, bop. like we we had the luxury of working with Hollins Head and oh, I saw uh, that. Giants. Yeah, that was, that's so cool, isn't it? Yeah, and those two guys move better than some like hundred and ten pound guys. Mm. The studio, like people don't have that natural ability to squat down. You know, like the natural squat. So that yeah. like we as bodybuilders tend to completely fuck up the squat to get the results that we want yeah the natural squat position is where you go down like a ballerina heels out and you come yeah. up on your toe that's yeah. that is the full squat yeah. um and people can't do that mm. are you talking about from like a, a squatting like a biomechanical squat. like ancestral way mm-hmm. of where us squatting would come on our tippy toes heels off the ground yeah like as if you was going to go around a campfire yeah, you'd squat down to a campfire, yeah. and people also, have lost that yeah. ability to be <laughs> yeah. able to. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have this. I have this conversation with a lot of people. To be fair, yeah, well, posing requires a lot of that mm. being able to squat down like that, and and it's mad. You get like Collins Head and and the Giant that are like three hundred pounds at times, and I think James was three hundred pounds when John was working with him, and fuck me, the guy can move, mate. Yeah. It, do you think it's because he has so much muscle mass and he's connected with so much mus- so much muscle? It's not like I can connect with my chest pretty easy and my lats pretty easy, but him with the amount of tissue he actually has. I, imagine how many like how much connection he has with it because it's just so big. Yeah, maybe possibly, but I also I mean? think as well it depends what you previous. Mm. So for instance, like myself, I've done shit tons of martial arts when I was younger and um, I've done lots of like calisthenics as well and loads of stuff like that. And it and you because I've done that, growing the tissue afterwards, I've still enabled, I've still enabled to do those moves. Whereas guys that tend to put the tissue on and then want to be flexible, it's harder. And yeah. Holly said used to be a skater, didn't he? Yeah, skate roller skater, isn't it? Yeah. Now you can do backflips and shit. Yeah, I saw that on that on that grass on that football right. field did, or something. Yeah. You know, did yeah. you see um Samson's posing routine at the Arnold's. Yeah, man. Yeah, was <laughs> that was very, very good. Yeah, yeah. He showed he uh, showed a lot of people how to pose that day. He did. He made, he lot, did. He made a lot of people cry. I as don't, well. <laughs> yeah. Don't like. Don't get me wrong. Obviously, it was it was uh, very sad that obviously John Meadows went, and obviously so same with Sean Moden. Um, and he obviously dedicated his routine to that. But I do partly feel that he was trying to get a few sympathy points out of it. 
you reckon? I, I had a weird, maybe we're, maybe we're the same though, or we're, we shouldn't be so judgmental. But I'm all, I know I'm not a negative person, but I always kind of like, yeah, but did he? Like, I'm like that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, but yeah, don't, but, don't get me wrong. Yeah, but it's, did he? It was <laughs> very, so, very good. Yeah, it was amazing. But I, I was, I, I looked at it and I was like, is he just trying to make people emotional so he can get better points? But isn't that the whole point though? It's a competition. So you can do what you can anyway. I had him winning the show, so I don't think he did try and win simply. I yeah. personally think Samson had the better physique that day, and I think he deserved to win that. I had him in the lead, and so did I, a lot of people. Ask him, so. I, I would rather have a Samson physique over at um, the Asher. All day. The, yeah, the Asher, yeah. All day, mate. Yeah. The Asher's got a blocky waist. And... Isn't it very, it's very, very like, yeah. It's like yeah very, very high ever. insertions. Yeah. Yeah, to me, me, Samson, I don't think he was trying to earn sympathy points. I think working with so many people, doing routines... It's, it's natural. If someone passes that's close to you, you're going to do a routine of them. Like my nan. My first yeah. routine dedicated to my nan, you know? Yeah. Um, we, we try to get sympathy points. You tell everyone before you're doing that. You did, didn't you? I don't know people around me. <laughs> yeah. And they did cry, yeah. <laughs> um, no one cried for me, mate. You yeah, know, routines are a thing, mate. You put emotion in it. Yeah. I cried for that. Thank you, mate. I yeah. cried because I was outside and they went back in. <laughs> no, you're crying because my frozen routine was so bad. <laughs> oh no. Ah. No, they wouldn't let me back in the building anyway, so I couldn't see her, could I? That's that's really bad, wasn't it, for our first show? We, were, was we weren't all you Joe, you didn't do ours, did you? No, my first one was Southwest. Yeah. Yeah. Um but yeah, that was that was mad. That was really annoying to be fair. It was like, so you're in, you finish. Oh, congrats, fuck off. Okay. <laughs> Within seconds, get out. Get out now. Also, okay. as well, no donuts. Yeah, I know. Oh, I noticed that. Out of the time, on the whole time, and then no donuts. Yeah, nothing, man. Yeah. It's like, it doesn't cost much, does it? They could even the just get... Get... So great, I would have been mega pissed, but the venue was sick, wasn't it? Uh, what? In, in Birmingham? Yeah. Yeah, it, made, it was the Coliseum. It was Hercules. You've seen the scene, scene from Hercules, the cartoon, Disney? When he walks up oh. to Dad, when he walks yeah. up to Papa Zeus, that Coliseum, honestly... It's on my YouTube vlog for the day, the show day vlog. Like, I watched it. Yeah, and I was like, hang on. <laughs> but I'm Hercules. <laughs> and I was in my sliders as well. I was like, yes. I'm in my little clocks, like, walking up there. I actually really liked the way your mum was trying to sort of, like, yeah. dig you up at the end. <laughs> yeah. He was like, fuck off, mum. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny, isn't it? <laughs> but I suppose that's what mums are for, isn't it? Oh, but you did really well. Mum, I came fifth. But you did really yeah. well. I was like, I came fifth. <laughs> I'm not happy. Yeah, I'm Excellent. not happy at all. You boys, I think we've 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 spoken obviously individually. Um, but have you have you since I've last spoken to you, have you made any more plans in terms of competing next year? Are you gonna take even longer off or what? Yeah, after watching oh sorry, I'll do you want me to go or yeah, go on. Yeah, after go watching your podcast with Darren Nally, actually, uh it convinced me to do fit X. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to very much. It seems really good. Yeah, I spoke to Darren on the on the phone afterwards. What's cool. a cool guy? He's really and, uh, nice. Yeah, he corrected me, didn't he? I don't know if you saw my Instagram. So uh, I put up a like PCA two bros fit X couple of natty shows because I didn't want to be too biased. And I just put them up and I said it's on the amateur federations to start handing out best poser awards and and giving more sort of props to people that actually compose. Yeah, like it should be highly more highly regarded in the posing system in my opinion and then darren nally was the only one from the federal he responded straight away and he went we do a best poser buddy and i was like stand corrected that's really good and i and i said like i'm happy that i'm going with you guys next year then in that case and i will be winning that fucking best poser award <laughs> No, he won't. So I'm, try. I'm gonna jump. Very, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna jump into your show, and you're gonna coach my posing. You better not make me look like an idiot. <laughs> the guys that are going against me. How are you? Yeah, yeah. So you're... the so we had a, a me and my mates. I told you about it, didn't I? Yeah. Me and my pals, we got this bet where um, the three of us are all gonna go, go and do the same because we're the same height, same class, and everything. We're all gonna go and do the same show and compete against each other just for a laugh. Yeah. You know, and, uh, but obviously I'm coaching them for their posing. So you're gonna make them look so crap. So you're gonna like my routine is gonna look epic. So you, you boys, you just do a bit of that if you want. It's okay. You gotta take pride in them, though, haven't you? Is he gone? Where have you gone? 
He has. He's frozen. He's fr- Look at him. He's gone. What about you, mate? What about your competing next year? Um, none for me next year. Um, I'm pretty determined to take a year off, even though I'm already itching to get back on stage. Yeah. Um, Fit X 100%, I'm going to do my next season. The way they've just, the way they've come through the season and the standard of the show that they've brought out yeah. is incredible. Did you go to, um, you didn't go, did you go to the little expo they did there in, no. in Liverpool? No, that was really good. That was good. I actually yeah, found, I did hear that. I actually found it was better, mate, than the Arnold expo. Oh, really? Yeah, mate. 100%. I've got way more freebies, which that's why you go to an expo for. Come on. Yeah. Um, you go there to see people and shake hands, kiss babies, but get loads of free snacks. Yeah. Uh, and I walked away with loads. I went to, I went to Body Bar when I was 17, I think. Yeah. One of the guys that I've already worked with. Always, man. Oh, am I here? Definitely not. That was ages ago. <laughs> I was that, that was that so weird. delayed. Mate, that was like 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yeah, I went to body power when I was 17. I think I got maybe a couple of pre-workout sachets, yeah. a pair of socks and a packet of protein. Yeah, rubbish. That, that was all the freebies I got. Yeah, I went, I went to body world in like 2019. I think no 2018 was my first one and it was like I think that was when it was all going downhill or coming out at the end so I went at the end which was a great timing for me wasn't it but uh, yeah I'm going to compete next year I'm going to do it and every oh, yeah. single and every single day make this today I've under ate yesterday I under ate and I'm like when I'm cooking my tea my last meal I put my hand into cereal boxes at the moment just be like Bang, bang, bang. Like my appetite's yeah. through the roof. Um, but uh, yeah, diet's like on point. Diet's like, and it's, it's really good because I'm I'm sort of waiting like every f- six weeks and then I up my diet. So I just up it slightly. So it's like little, I just hit like a like a wall and I'm thinking, okay, is, is training and regardless because I like eating anyway, I'm like, it's because I'm not eating enough. And it typically yeah. usually is, you know, after that, I'm at six weeks of hard training. Then you take a bit of a deload, adjust your diet and now I'm not hungry again, or now I'm progressing again, or do you know what I mean? So yeah, I quite like it that way. Um, so that's, that's similar to me at the moment. Like the way that my mind is different this time around to compared to after my shows prior, yeah. um, my eating so much cleaner this time around. Oh, it's, it's, like I'm, yeah. I'm balancing around trying to hit about 3k a day. Some days I struggle, some days I find it quite easy. But before I'd be doing it by cereals, cookies, like the lot, anything that was high calories, I was like, yeah, okay, I was getting it down me. Yeah. This time it's, I don't, I know I can do it, but I, I actually don't want to. I know, I know. It's, it, I don't know if you've hit, if, if you've learned the same lesson as me. I've said this countless times, Absolutely. so I apologise to anyone that's listening to this again and hearing me say again. Um but I've just learned a lesson not to get fat again. That's my biggest lesson. It's just don't, just don't get fat. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Enjoy some food. Yeah, go for it. You better. How much, sure. how much are you weighing now? Hundred. It's not a lie, is it? That's not a lie, is it? Hundred kilo. Big mark though. Yeah, I'm a hundred kilo in the morning as well. Not at night after my last meal. After I've drank a litre of water. Um, you see a lot of guys do that, don't they? Look, guys, I've reached. 240 pounds and it's at 10 o'clock at night and they just smash like a spag I can't know I'm, <laughs> I'm guilty to that I've done that loads yeah look coach just to see look what I've managed to do just to see how high I can get yeah, yeah. just to see how how high I can get the number on the scale yeah do you do you agree with um, there's like two camps are you back with us now Sam you here yeah. maybe you can see me again yeah yeah you're here I can see yeah, you yeah, you're yeah. a lot clearer as well so I don't know if the Wi-Fi is actually on now <laughs> yeah. oh was it um there's two two camps isn't there about like let's let's call it i hate this word bulking i hate the word bulk oh, it fucking pissed me off man because it's just it's just like an easy like f- fat lazy person's way of going i'm eating loads of crap now i can get away with it um because i'm bulking 
but there's two camps isn't there it's like a dirty lot and they don't care about excess of fat gain because they know well it's going to come off anyway in diet it's going to come off anyway and then you've got the other camp that's like super clean super lean a little bit of, of course fat gain because it's going to happen what like do you think that some years you've got to do a bit of that like real push like get real fat and then some days or would you rather always do that would you rather always like eat clean through your off season i think a bit of both yeah yeah i like i like to because you get sick of 30 meals anyway don't you mm. like once you know what it's like when you come off a comp yeah. you, you have two days and you want to start eating clean again yeah yep. yeah and then after that comes the tidal wave of wanting to eat everything. What were like when, your, uh, through, through like preps, what was like your biggest? I had a list. <laughs> do, do you know what weirdly happened with me through prep? Yeah. This, uh, that for the second show, I, uh, I was in the middle of the gym training and you know, you're playing, you're, you're playing, your brain plays tricks on you. Like weird things. I did this. I smelt myself. I'm middle of, middle of session. I was like, What's that? No joke. It smelt. You know that smell of sausage sandwiches with onions, like caramelized onions and sausage sandwiches, sausage sarnies, right? With when you get the bread and you mop the fat on the frying pan. Oh, it smelt like that. I'm like, nah, my head is gone. <laughs> I'm gone. Weird. Uh, the worst the worst time I had it was my it was my very, very first show when I was 19. Yeah, 19. And um, I just had my card at work, jumped in the shower, used whatever shower gel was left by a member. And it was um, strawberries and cream scented. <laughs> the amount of time I just stood in the shower, just sniffing the shower gel, I was like, this is actually heaven. Yeah. I, I, was, I was thinking, I was like, I wonder if it tastes like it smells. <laughs> <laughs> Did it taste what it smelled like? I did not try it, though. No. I did oh, not try it. Mate, see, that's where we're different. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I've kind of, I've definitely done the three or four. Let's say, I've, let's say I've been training properly for about eight years, eight, six to eight years. I reckon within that time, I reckon f- five, six of them have been dirty bulks, not caring, not giving a crap, eating Chinese, Indian, Domino's, takeaways, whatever. And then two of those diets have been real good. And the, oh, sorry, the off seasons have been real good. All the, the building muscle part, the training bit, the building tissue. How, how have you felt the difference in the two? Oh, just well being, just not, just nice and just, just about nice in my clothes. Just oh, like they still feel nice and baggy. I've got a weird, do you know when you're super, super lean and your clothes are like real baggy and loose on you? It just feels nice. Like, just like I'm getting lean. You know, when you've got that feeling, you're like, whoa, my joggers are now, I've got to, I've got to tie my joggers up. I've never had to tie my joggers up. I love that feeling. And then, you know, when you've got that on your lower abdomen, you've got that V that women love because it's like arrow down to the cock. Um, that <laughs> bit is like really defined, like really protruding. And, and whenever I needed a wig, whenever I needed a wig, that's obviously like where the bladder is. It used to be, like, you should come out like that. It's like, whoa. <laughs> I would never have seen that otherwise. Oh, yeah, because I've got about 15 stone of fat on my midsection, <laughs> you know? I think, I think so to answer your question, mate, I think it's just the feel. I just, I just feel physically good not being so heavy and fat, just fat and lumpy. It's lazy fat, you know? I don't look like a, a swole bodybuilder. I would look like a, a guy that worked at the local cafe. I, I've definitely felt as if my training has been better doing it this time around like top end numbers have been shooting through the roof I haven't really felt lethargic um don't get me wrong yeah okay, it does get hard to eat three three and a half pair of just clean food like but do you think do you my think, mindset is different do you, think, do you think three to three and a half is hard for you to, to eat through clean for me yeah is I'm, it I'm not a big eater like well in, in off season I'm not a big eater um I when I done my very first PCA show, the way that my coach prepped me was exactly how he prepped himself, which which worked very very well for him. Um, we worked out the the season that I've just done, which would have been my third third PCA show. Yeah, that I need the complete opposite in. 
So what we do in the week on my first one, we'd strip down, like diet hard through the week, 1,400, 1,500 calories. And then he'd tell me to just go hot, go as hard as possible, get my numbers as high as possible on my weekend. The the biggest weekend I've ever done was 15K. Did you do a YouTube video? Do food I challenge? did not, but I've got it all on my fitness pal. Yeah. Are you still what, still? Yep, I found out. Oh. What about you, Sammy? Me? Um, I don't know. I've never really, I've never really like, fully tracked you know what me and john are like we pretty much wing shit don't we like i know he's with, he's with cam now and he's and he's yeah. on it well, but... while tracking his sleep and wear your blue light blocker glasses for 13 and a half minutes prior yeah. to your second meal i'm like fucking come on now you bellend i know you're great <laughs> but that is not needed is it <laughs> well i don't know when, when you see it firsthand and what he can do is pretty impressive yeah, yeah i'm sure yeah but um but but me personally i, I can't I can't do it. I'm, I'm very much just as long as I'm getting a good amount of protein, a good amount of carbohydrates five times a day. I don't really need to track it. And then if I want something sweet on top, I'll have it. Yeah. To me, it, it, it it's different. If I was going to be a competitive bodybuilder to the point where I'm going for pro cards and shit like that, and I and I had the genetics that John did, you know, because genetics are real whether people want to believe them or not you know when you see him up close it's it's a different ball game but um if i if i had that and i was going to shoot for those sort of stars then yeah i probably would you because you have to use everything to your advantage you know everything yeah. that's around you that you can you can possibly take in whether it is that minute little bit of well take this supplement and go to bed then and use ashwagandha and all this you know it's yeah. But for me personally, I just, I just, it takes the fun out of it for me. Yeah. And that's, when, that's when I stop um, doing things when it starts becoming fun. I can't be a robot. I never have been a robot. I'm very much was drawn into the old school bodybuilding when I, when I first came into. Well, it, yeah. It, it's taken your, you don't want to take the emotion from, from what you're doing. Cause that's emotionless. You've got to do this. It's what pisses me off. This when thing. People... This thing. This going thing. about arm days and shit. It's like I fucking like an arm day. Fuck yeah. off. Yeah. It's like uh, chest on a Monday, not do legs. Oh, good for you. You have to fucking. <laughs> that's that, that's almost. Like, yeah, that's and almost like, how. I, 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 you and I don't train on a Monday. So yeah. fuck off. <laughs> it's almost like those business gurus or those motivational speakers are like, sleep less, get up at four a.m. Oh, you damn well believe i've tried that i'm asleep at 7 a.m after that <laughs> like every day i'm gone so i would i perform better at waking up at six is that okay i do very well waking up at six um but you know you know those like it's like you yeah, shut up it might work for you but not for me oh yeah bloody hell i don't want to yeah. look at numbers mate tell me what, what sort of food i don't care about numbers tell me what food so you I've, eat i've had Started off with two big bars of curiously cinnamon. <laughs> okay. With that. honey as well. Oh, um, yeah. The little Mr. Kipling cheesecake swirl biscuit. Oh, yes. Thank you. Uh, four sugar waffles. What's a sugar waffle? Uh, like Belgian waffles. Oh, what, the, the ones that are on like the bakery are next to the bread, but they're not cooked. They're kind of like doughy. Yeah. And they're just embedded with sugar. Oh, they sound great. Yeah. Um, cinnamon bagel is a jam. Lucky Charms. Oreo yogurts. Cherry bagel tarts. Sounds to me like you like cereal, mate. For damn sure. I like cereal. <laughs> I like cereal. No uh, savoury. Cookies. I had a seven bone burger. Oh, chucked in a pot noodle there as well. Uh, flavour pot noodle. Can you remember? Chicken and mushroom. Yeah, that's my the green one. That's my favourite. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Um Pop Tarts. Pop Tarts. <laughs> Pizza Hut. And then a custard and raspberry donut. Would have loved to have dieted on that. I got nowhere near that, mate. And I had such a weird head on me. I had a, even such a better. One. So I still managed to hit 340 grams of protein. Yeah. So all the trace protein is still got that. 2,100 carb. 2,000 grams, 2, grams of carbs. 
It's just yeah. shy of 600 grams of, yeah. grams of fat. Yeah, he's smashed 10,000 calories. I'll be shocked if he didn't have at least 300 grams of protein in there. I'll be like, what's he Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Were you ever, did you, to your coaches, I don't know if you, if you did anything like me, but if your coach said to you, hey go and have yourself a cheat day cheat meal and you were like real into it and he still said that to you like i'm talking a few weeks out maybe within six weeks i always yeah. argued my case and i said i can't do it. i'm really sorry i can't have a burger i don't want to i can't do it uh, you damn i really want it but i can't do it man i'd rather just eat more rice or eat more cream of rice or eat more bagels than what i'm currently eating just eat more it would just play with my mind if i had a pizza i'd like i fucked it up even if you told me i could have it yeah I don't know. Mm. You weren't like that way. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I'm allowed a pizza. Sick. <laughs> I wasn't allowed it. John won't ever put anyone on pizzas. Oh, okay, cool. Just... John won't allow pizzas. Why? Just, uh, he's, got, he's got a thing about it. I think it's just uh, the volume of, of calories. He's like a burger and fry guy. He's like, you got a cheat meal? Burger and fries. Oh, okay. He, see that. Always got to have your cheat meal, not actually says, go and have a cheat meal. He tells you what cheat meal it is. Yeah, I um I used to get clients. Yeah, I used to build fake aways. I used to call them. So, um, <clears throat> I used to say to them, "You're having burgers and fries, but you're not going Five Guys. You're not going Mackey's. You're going to use this ingredient. You're going to make one hell of a fucking burger and fry. And it tastes amazing. And they feel like they're proper cheating, but it's got that many ingredients in it. It's got five things yeah. in it. They know exactly yeah. what's in it, and they're full. And it's different food. It's not just hey, go to Five Guys because that is full of shit." Even though there's an argument to say that's good for you though, but or to help fat loss, etc. But I do it that way. Yeah. And that's, equally, that's one thing I always, always preach to my clients: the difference between off-plan meal and a cheat meal, and what everyone gets confused when they very first start training yeah. and doing this sort of thing. They yeah. just think they don't think of an off-plan meal; they just think of it as a cheat meal. Yeah, I, and I they actually, just get absolutely harmed. Yeah, just a simple thing that I do for clients so they don't overindulge if, if, you know, I just say to them, yes, you're having a free meal, cheat meal, whatever meal you want to call it, the, whatever you want to call that. I say, you're having one, but you're going to make it at home. And as soon as you say that, they're like, oh, okay, I'll make my own lasagna. And typically they go for 5% mints anyway because they've been having 5% mints all this time. So they go and buy the same one. And then they go buy, oh, so pasta sheets, I could get like a low, I don't know salt sugary one or should i just go for the, i'll go for the low sugar it's probably going to taste if i can say them anyway and then they go to the jars of sauces and they typically go for the dolmio with the blue strip that says five percent what how i do it's like they're still going to chuck a load of great stuff down their gob but they're going to choose better options typically in the supermarket i haven't yet found a client that's gone what i can make my own and they go to the same reason buy a pack of 20 donuts i've not had that yet <laughs> um oh, that's very true that's how i work it that's how I work cheat meals. Yeah. Oh, yeah I'm, I'm saying so, have a start on the first time you go. Yeah. <laughs> what you just say? You just, you just say to client, you just say to clients, go and have a starter on main. Replace one meal with a starter on the main. That's my oh. go-to. Yeah. Or, or, a, or a main and a dessert. So they get one of two. Just, of each. Two, just two courses, you just say. Have two courses. Two courses. But then um you know, my guy is mostly a lifestyle, so I ain't got no competitors. Mm. And to me, it's like they're, they're they're like lads as well that they like going out and foot, like watching the football and having a beer and things like that. So yeah. you have to kind of work it around their particular lifestyle. If you hinder, if you shut them down too much, they're just not going to have any fun. You know? Mm -hmm. Do you do you have to do you have that? Many, I've never had this, but do you have that many clients that? You've got to deal with their, I'm going to say drinking problem. It's not drinking problems, drinking issues, but you know, a lot of people, <clears throat> they just love their food. Like I do, like you too do. Yeah. Have you had many clients that are like, I've got to drink every weekend. Do you have yeah. many of them? Not many, but I've had a couple and yeah. I just push them towards slimline tonics and vodka and diet yeah. mix. Spirit, spirits, typically I just say, yeah, I just go spirits. But yeah, yeah I'll say the same. Yeah. I've had a couple in the past, but. It's quite, it's good to see how their mindset changes though. Like they, they start and they're exactly like that. Like I want to go and have a drink every single weekend. I don't want to lose my social life, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But as soon as they start getting into it, their, their mindset changes into it. Yeah. So should we, should we answer some questions? A, it's just a time game. Yeah, man. Did you boys get any? I've got loads. <laughs> um, have, a little, have a little sift through if you've got any. If not, I'll start or I'll start while you look. Ready? 
Hmm. What one should we start with? Uh, oh, I took this from your, I think he's your mate, Sammy, I think. Um, he asked on the last Q&A, but we didn't manage to do it. Favourite anime or series, like favourite anime cartoon or favourite anime series? Just... Huh? Who was that? What was his... Is it Bradley? Bradley? Brad. Brad. He's one of the guys I'm competing against. Ah, oh, cool. I did his posing routine. Did you? He had gone and he won, and he won so. Well, then, favourite anime? Uh, that's so hard, man. But just, if you're a true anime fan... Does Poke- Poke- Pokemon class as anime? It does, yeah. But it depends. I, I was, I was going to say Pokemon, because to be honest, that's the only other one I've really watched. I'll go Pokemon. That's the lot. That's the one I've uh, like re like have watched. Still, still watch. Mm. Um. <laughs> I would say of all time, it's got to be a toss up between Street Fighter and Dragon Ball. Probably Street Fighter edging it. Currently, I'd probably say um, Attack on Titan or Tokyo Ghoul. What's the um? Is it Castlevania? Castlemania? Castlevania? Something like that. It's just by, that's that's basically just a, something that was already around and then got turned into an anime because Castlevania was a game, wasn't it? Oh, it I've was. It was um, it's like that's how would you how would you call that sort of game where you just see the side of the character like Tekken and like uh, it's a platform two D platform is, it, is that platform? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've never seen it, but I've heard. I don't know if you want to class it as anime, but I've heard um, Adventure Time's good. Adventure Time. I think it's a budget song. I'm not saying that. Yeah, in Netflix. Not, not one that's on my radar. I think it's a bit comical and. Is it? From what I can gather, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's got a lot of fun characters in it. Mm. Right, next one. But yeah, no, Attack on Titan. Mm, no, no, no. Not that one. Oh, that's a good one. This is good. <laughs> I wonder if. Yeah, you'll say, I'm sure. (laughs) Worst advice a coach had given you, has given you, has ever given you, let's say. The worst piece of advice a coach has ever given you. Uh, Take two, T3 when I was 18 weeks out. Okay. (laughs) And what, okay. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Joe? I can't really think, actually. Um, So I've only really ever had... My manager is a coach who's been very cautious with me all the way through. Yeah. Um, and Jamie Jahal. Uh, and to be fair, none of them, neither of them have really actually given me any bad advice. No, um, I don't think I've had bad advice, but then if I look back, I'll be like, you were shite. At that very moment, you were shite. That's why I'm not with you. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. dude, it's terrible, man. Yeah, I can, I can I can vouch for that. Like, don't get me wrong. Jamie was a decent coach. Um, not gonna obviously not gonna slate anyone. There was just times that you'd do the check-in form, you'd send it off to them. <laughs> yes. You'd mention a few things that you'd need to change in. You get the plan back. No changes. It's like, okay, what was the point of me sending you my check-in if you're not actually going to change anything? Yeah. I say that's probably the only thing. Yeah. I I had a. Uh... I really, I'm not even going to go into, I'm not going to go into detail. I had a really bad experience at my first show. Be hot backstage, like ready to go out. And basically I was asking for advice and he just wouldn't pick up his phone. He just wouldn't text back. And it took about 30 minutes for him to reply. If I had a, if I had a client going into, go into a comp, I'd be, I'd lock myself in a room with my phone in front of me like this, staring at it, ready for a message yeah. from my client. Just like, is he going to message? Is he, going to, is he all right? Is he good? Okay. No. Okay. Right. I'll just see you for a minute. He was on a boat fishing. That's bad. I'll say that again. He was on a boat what? fishing. To be fair, if he, why wasn't he with you? As long as he had to see I'll, I'll give you his number, mate. I'll give you his number so you can give him a message. <laughs> you can ask him because I have no idea. Go on, what are you saying, Sam? Is he... I said, it, it's not so bad that he's on a boat fishing if he had signal when he was answering his phone. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can sit at the end of the boat and talk yeah. to me then. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
It's just like I wouldn't book a boat trip. I wouldn't go on the boat. I would extend the time. I'd wait. I'd push the time on. I'd be like, my client, that's a big day tomorrow. It's this kid, this kid's going in his, standing in his pants on a stage for the first time in his life. I think I'm just going to hang about and just wait for him. Do you know what I mean? You just got to really just simplify it and just be like, yeah, I shouldn't do that. Well, I wouldn't anyway. Yeah. Obviously, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> that's how I look at it anyway. It's just care. It's due care from your coach, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, did anyone see what Joe Ballinger put up the other day? He got loads of traction. I loved it. No, go on. He was basically just highlight all these coaches, and I'm not going to name names, but there's a lot of coaches out there just um, screenshotting their bank balances and, and putting really? it on their story. Have you not, have you not seen, have you name, not seen name, name someone that's done that. I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm not are, they that, do it. are they that popular yeah. that I would know? Because I don't really know anyone. Yeah. yeah. But uh, pe- people would know. And uh, and Joe Banninger just put a, a massive thing up about your client does not care about your bank balance. Like, if you're a client and, and it's saying, like, and then someone reposted, yeah, if, you're, if your PT is talking about how many clients and how much their bank balance is, but they're wearing Gucci trainers eating in their own car. Yeah. Yeah, you've got the you've got these two coaches. I don't care. I don't say anything. You've got these, <laughs> you've got these two coaches up in Brum. They're, like, Swench or something. And you've got this Troy guy, if that if you recognize the names, this Troy guy. Well, yeah. Must know. Yeah, this this Troy guy. I think they they seem legit and they're from Brum, so they're my kind of guys. But uh they wear like so flashy shit, man. And they're like breeding bulldogs and they got loads of money and it's kind of driving flashy cars. It's kind of like, do I really want to give you my money? Because you're a bit of a cunt. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's like I'm gonna give it to the guy that's maybe a bit quieter and really like giving it some and showing a bit of enthusiasm not the guy that's like driving his range and his lambo and just like Row. i'm like yeah, you yeah. don't give a shit about me <laughs> do they well your your whole persona shows how much shit you give about me and yes it? yes i think so yep. i think it really so. does i think sometimes yeah. i'm not kidding right sometimes i will finish a voice note while i'm taking a shit and sometimes mm. think to a client and i'm thinking wow, I actually really care. Sometimes I sit there and I go, well, whatever I'm doing, I'm like, wow, I shouldn't be doing that. I should actually be enjoying my three minutes of poop that I'm instead I'm recording to my client to help them. And I think I'm actually pretty good at what I'm doing. I'm in the right, I'm doing what I'm supposed to. Do you, do you ever get those moments where you're like, I'm actually really good? Because <laughs> I okay, actually care. Really good if, they go, if they don't hear the... <laughs> they don't. I time it. I time it really well. Every, <laughs> I time it really well. Every every time the torpedo uh, splashes... I, and then I continue, and I'm like, and then I continue. <laughs> I think it's post poop, boys. I think that it's already flushed. I'm just chilling on the toilet, really. I don't, I'm not like mid flow, you know. <laughs> no, yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah, I get what you mean. I'll, I'll think about it. That's that, I didn't even see that. I haven't really been on the, the gram the last couple of days, but yeah, it's um, why posting your bank balance will do what for you? What will that do to prove that you're successful? Because you're close. No way. A lot of these guys are actually running seminars, getting coaches, and then coaching the coach. Uh, those so guys. they're saying, I can get you 10 grand a month. Yeah. Here's some of those bank balance. Yeah. And then it pulls down, and then so and so goes, Look at my bank balance. And then now, now that you've said that, that specific number, I think I know exactly who you're on about. <laughs> I actually don't know who that, now, that, that, now that you've said that specific number, I think I know exactly. Do they all live in like, do a few of Joe them like Ballinger live in Dubai? Joe Ballinger posted the number up, so. Let's have a look. I'm going to have a look on the inside. I don't know, I don't know who he is. What's his name? Joe. Joe Ballinger. I don't know if he'll be on there. I don't know if the dude I'm thinking about is linked with him. Joe's not linked with the, with the guy. Um... No, I think it's the story's gone down now. Yeah. Yeah, it's it was, a bit weird, uh, isn't it? Why you would do that. Well, I, I understand I don't I understand where they're coming from, but it's just to me, it's just such a dirty approach around doing it. Aren't they doing it? Aren't they doing it though to help to so say it's the, it's the mentor, the business mentor, the coach who coaches the coaches? Say we can we can boost your coaching business by this amount. Here's proof, you know? Yeah. But yeah. Has Right, one of the coaches that's done 10K, 
Does he pull his shorts up to his crotch? <laughs> isn't that every? Isn't that every PT? No, because yeah. like there's there's a few that like yeah okay you put you pull your shorts up a little bit to show a little bit of quad, but you're walking through the middle of the town in what looks like your posing trunks. You pulled them up that high. I like that big. I'd never ever release them in public ever. That's that's the one person that I know that no. now that you say 10k, that's the one person I'll see. Yeah, there is a few. It becomes sort of like a bit of an epidemic. One person does it and then everyone thinks it's cool, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's probably been that. Yeah. Yeah. The trend, the trend follows. Weird. Yeah. Weird. Very weird. Uh next question. What qualifies as a nerd? That's actually a pretty good question to you. What would, qualify, um, what would qualify? I think personally, being devoted to one subject and you love it so much. You don't know. It doesn't have to be a few. It could just be one subject, one thing, and you know the almost the ins and outs of that subject. Would you class that as a nerd? Have to be around. I was going to say the same. Because you could be a nerd, nerd at candle making. Yeah. Yeah. You, really. Because to be fair, like, I, I, I can vouch to myself. I don't, I've got a little bit of common sense. I don't know much about life, but fitness wise, I know a lot about it. We're very similar, mate. I don't so, know what's going on. I didn't even know what happened yesterday. <laughs> no. Oh, man, that candle's so good. For the people I that do are listening. I like a good ton of candle. Mate, doesn't it make you downstairs? Like, or am I more, too much of a woman? I think I'm a woman, am I? I mean, you're a bit of a woman in that sense, but yeah, sure. Honey, honey and chocolate. <laughs> My other half got one from, I can't remember where it's from. It might have been Home Bargains. And it was um gingerbread. Oh, yes. I love that a Home Bargains, beautiful. man. Love a Home Bargains, love a B&M. That was good. Oh. <sighs> I love those places. I'll end up, I end up yeah. going in there. I end up going in there like, I'm going to spend a fiver. Oh, that will be £55, please, sir. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my missus. <laughs> I told you I'm a woman. Um, next question. Let's go for, what did I say? We kind of covered a bit of this, maybe. Biggest pet peeves with people in the gym. So inside the gym while training. Pet peeves. I've got one, but I won't start. I'll wait. I'll, I'll give you boys a go. But just don't use mine. <laughs> mm. Pet peeves about being in the gym or just the gym industry? <laughs> Uh, we'll get to have you just got one about the industry haven't you I do have one about the industry yeah. I'll go first and I'll go inside the gym I hate it hate <laughs> hate you know when the people when they film themselves which I have to do all the time which you boys do but I'm talking like um, higher <laughs> end higher end stuff like um, like YouTube videos or not just like for your story sort of thing and where they really act as if they're lifting a lot of weight when they act in their face. So I see this with a lot of women, no offense to women. I'm not saying, I see this a lot of like with their, with their like two girls training and they go, Oh yeah. Ugh. And I'm like, you don't, yeah. you don't sound like that. Do you, do you at yeah. all? <laughs> I don't it's sound like, like if that. You're... Don't, like, don't give me a, yeah. Okay. Like you put, you put focus into the set, yeah. but your face shouldn't, be like that from the like start. like this like they're a barbarian like the women like ha, ha, like, ha. Like, <laughs> like you're eyes, a barbarian eyes, like, you don't look like that <laughs> skull. like literally eyes popping out of skull tension yeah like it's just yeah no I can vouch for that I hate that I hate that you, you can grunt and shout all you like I don't care just do it just do it if it's really if it's really challenging but you can tell it's like first rep and the camera's gone dink oh. Yeah. it's like you're not videoing yeah. like for netflix you're not actually acting you're just you want to i don't know i don't know it just pisses yeah. me off uh <laughs> next one <laughs> my well, my pet peeve mm, go on uh yeah, i don't know i'll pretty much zone out when i'm in the gym i don't really what really what really pisses you off when you're inside the gym what really pisses me off <laughs> I'm getting some emotion there. What really fucking pisses you off? Oh, to be fair, if you're... Here we go. See what? I'm so good at this. You boys, well done. Now come, come at me. Especially during prep. Like, any time, anytime, yes, but especially during prep. When a member 
or anyone wants to come over and talk to you whilst you're mid set, like at least stand a little bit out of the way before coming over to talk to you. Don't stand over me and watch me whilst I'm doing a set. Yeah. That. It's like, like, yeah, it's when your client comes up, you're actually really strong, man. I'm, mid, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually mid set. I'm mid set. Piss yeah. off, please. <laughs> um, Jim's pretty cool. We are, no one really pisses me off in it. I think the only thing that probably, there's two things. Mm. One thing that pisses me off is when um, I am on prep <laughs> and, and it's not their fault, bless them, they care, but they want to talk about the prep and they're like, yeah. how long now? Oh, is it? <laughs> and they asked you the same thing yesterday. Yeah. How yeah. long now? <laughs> what, what are you eating it now? Uh, how much cardio are you on? And it's like, oh, fuck off. And then probably um, the other thing when I'm not on prep is just, people that feel like they have the right to decide what music goes on in the gym and they're fucking, as soon as a song comes on that they don't like, they run straight over to the front of the counter and they're like, eh, why are we listening to this? It's like, fuck off. Like, who do you think? I don't think I've ever seen anyone do that, but that's pretty cool. Yeah, change. That's cool. We get a lot at our gym. That's weird, isn't it? I've got one thing and I don't, you, you're all going to think really wrongly of me now. It's okay. I accept it. I've got broad shoulders. It's all right. When I'm on prep and I'm really knackered, six o'clock in the morning, I've got to do an hour, one hour on the Stairmaster. And I know I've got to come back later, train and do another half an hour on the Stairmaster. So my 60 minutes AM, let's say if I'm cracking that out and I'm on the st same Stairmaster for eight weeks and some chap is clocking me do this and he's seen me getting leaner and leaner and leaner. And he puts two and two together and goes, that guy's getting really lean because of the Stairmaster. So I know because he's been coming in here every day, I've been seeing him for two whole months. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go on that same Stairmaster that guy goes on at that time because that's how he got fit. I fucking hate that. But I know I don't. I hate it, man. I hate it. It's like, no, 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 no. This is mine. <laughs> I've been doing it for two months. This is mine. Do Keep doing you and keep looking shit because I'm making some results over here. <laughs> I'm not like yeah. that harsh, but I get, it really pisses me off because it's like, you know, when you're in prep and you've got a system, you've got the same fork, you've got the same knife, you've got the same spoon, you've got the same bowl for certain foods. You eat that yeah. time, you like sitting in bed, you like watching that at that time, that at that time, seeing that guy then. It's like that Stairmaster, that's mine at that time. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, I can match that. That's I'm not like, me. Oh, really? You're just, you're very polite and you like to share things. That's absolutely fine. I'm Chill. chill mate um, I've always been pretty chill nothing really vexes me too much but um, there's only one stairmaster in that gym mate can you have my back there we only have two you have another option that's <laughs> okay I have one no no they, yes there's a, yes there's another option but I'm the same as you we've got we've got two stairmasters we've got two bikes we've got two treadmills I have to use the same one yeah I'm very sorry I have to I can't I can't not use the other one. Does it kind of like throw you off? Hang on. There's a bit of a breeze to my right cheek here. I never get the right <laughs> breeze. I never get this. It sounds like fucking Sheldon from the big bang field. <laughs> yeah. That's my spot. Yeah, yeah. I like that program to be. Have you seen Young Sheldon? What? Have you tried that yet? I tried it. It's not it's not as good as Big Bang. No. no not at all. Um next question. Best advice. Okay. Best advice, it's actually far lost. Some some people are spelling it pisses so much, pisses me off. Best advice for fat loss. Best advice. Let's get one piece of advice from each of us. That'll be enough. Stay consistent. You bastard. I hate you. That was what exactly what I was going to do. Shit. Um, I'm actually going to have to think uh, now. Um, but trust in the process. <laughs> <laughs> was that your second it <laughs> wasn't quite that but it was very similar to that uh, be consistent trust the process and come on Matt fucking hell <laughs> <I'm brainy. laughs> his brain just the way <laughs> it's gone isn't it <laughs> isn't it gone I'm so stoned How about oh, have, the, have, the, have the um uh keep your circle very tight and have the right people around you surround yourself with the right people i think mm -hmm. i think that's really good nice yeah that's a good one 
Yes, good one. That was well worth I'll the wait. That Sorry one. about that. Um, yeah, so being being incredibly consistent, being relentlessly consistent. What did you say, Joe? Trust in the process. Trust in your coach, trust in the process, trust in you are losing fat, and then surrounding yourself with the right people. You missed one important one. Don't, don't pay too much attention to the scales. You could have yes. that. That's very good. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's very good. Yeah. I think oh, Scal's head fucked me on my second show, man. Did it? Yeah, massively. Because there's uh, there's actually a picture of me the same way when I, as I was when I started the prep as when I finished it. I think I'd only lost a kilo in the entire prep. I just sort of my body just recomped, and um and yeah, like I looked considerably obviously better, but it was the same weight. So I didn't I didn't really lost much. I think I was like, I dropped a kilo and a half in the entire prep. Wow. And I was, best shape ever but a lot of it was uh through stress and that i had so much shit going on with my personal life and that and um it impacted and i i, I hold water through anything but like, yeah. we spoke about this before didn't we yeah a bit of stress i'm comes, the same as that Mob goes in and then water comes straight away and yeah that that was the big one for me this was just sorting out the stress but it was things that was out of my control you know um so you just have to sort of do your best with it. And what John managed to be able to see what was going on, I don't know how he did, but he did. He was like, no, don't worry, you are losing fat. And I was like, fucking where? Because <laughs> I can't see it, bruv. And the scale was saying the same thing and the clock's ticking down every single... And uh, But yeah, and then I just listened to him, trusted him, and he was right in the end because I was. Yeah. There you go. And you, you trusted it. That's, you, just think, you just said all three, all in one go that you had there. So you had the right person yeah. with you. You were incredibly consistent and you were trusting him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had that uh, about three weeks before my first show. I was like, I cannot be standing on stage looking like this. And he was like, you look incredible. No, I don't. What are you talking about? <laughs> I couldn't see it. I could you're, not you're see completely oblivious to it at that time. I could, not, I could not see it. And now I look back and go, look at the second show. I'm like, holy crap. Eight weeks, it would have been between like three weeks before the first and then right before the second show, there's about an eight week gap. The amount of difference you can change within the body in, in two months is ridiculous. Even when you're yeah. super lean anyway, you can dig even further and you get veins popping out your legs and all sorts. It's crazy. Yeah, your difference between your first and second was cool, man. You did really well. Yeah, it really is stupid, stupid change. And I, we didn't, I, I ate more and did less cardio. So I didn't do the Stairmaster for six weeks between the two shows. Oh. That was removed. It was an incline tread. Um, and I ate, I know this sounds, I know I said a lot, I, I ate more food, technically it is, but a bagel thin, more food. It was, that's pathetic, but it was technically more food, you know. It was something yeah. more, it was something more, which is good. Um, next one. So we've got a coach again. I want to, uh, so I want to hire a coach, but I'm not sure what I'm looking for. Any help would be... Appreciate it. You need I to know put that before you hire a coach. Yeah. Sorry? You need to know what you're looking for before you hire a coach. What are they looking for when they hire a coach? Oh, what they want. Well, the person asked the question said, I want to hire a coach, but I don't know what I'm looking for. It's like you need to find out what you are, what you want, you know, then what you want out of this process and then the best coach will come from the pro the process that you are trying to, you know, you can't hire a bodybuilding coach if you want to, if you're going into a yeah. blooming fight coming up or something like that. You, I, think you that's, I think that's probably the best piece of advice you can give is, well, know yeah. what you're looking for first and that's what you need to look for. <laughs> yeah. 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 They need to just find their why really. Yeah. sounds really cliche, but it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Joe, you got anything to add to that, or about the same? Um, I'd say it's also after you've figured out what you want, what you want, and your why to get in a coach. It's finding someone that you click with. You can't Again. Again. have a bad relationship with a coach at all, yeah. um, because they won't give you the effort that you need from them. You will begrudge what they say. They'll take away a little bit of food and you'll be like, oh, you're just doing that because you hate me. You're just doing that because you're a current. Like, yeah. You won't see the reason behind it at all. Um, prior to that, though, I actually did a question on my Insta of that, of 
like what attracts you to a coach from a marketing sense, whether that's training videos, whether that's info videos, whether that's just general engagement. And well, there you go. That, that's, that's, that's a question back to you. What do you think from an Instagram perspective portrays a good coach? Results, following? No. Um, pro- no, none of that. Not no, knowledgeable no. posts. No, what, no, no. what what would attract you to a coach? So, someone that's approachable, that's just like me. Someone that's just a real person. Yeah. I had a call today with a lady who has had two previous coaches, one of which I know all too well, who were trained for, for a long, long time. Um, and she left her um, for the simple reason that they would talk once a week for 10 minutes on a check-in. Great check-in. Rinse and repeat. See you next week. I'm thinking, so you're paying about 200 quid for that. <laughs> and you know she follows me on instagram and she said i just picked you because you sing on your phone and i do that i just sing all the time and you're just like a normal person there you go genuinely those are the yeah, things no. you said and it just we had this conversation a little while ago though matt didn't we mm. about how like the average person can spot a bullshitter a mile away oh, my radar my, my <clears throat> bullshit radar is on point He's so good, isn't he? It's so acute, mine. It's so strong. I can find bullshit. All spaces well. left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. It's the ones that, you know, every time a client comes on board, they take a picture of their laptop screen, they go, bink, welcome aboard, uh, Jane Big Bum 021. Congratulations. <laughs> You've just joined me as a client. It's like, we don't care. Yeah. Um, I don't care that you've just got a new client. Yeah, yeah. thanks for sending you're busy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah, that's it. That's almost like a oh, passive. Aaron, it's yeah, ridiculous. It's like a, a a passive way of them being able to to try and show people that they're busy. But hey, is that? Could you say that's the same as what I do when I show people that I watch people train on the phone or a PT's videoing a client squatting? Can you say that's the same thing? Or not? Yeah, it's, it's kind of similar. Yeah, it's like oh, hang on, you're just you're showing me your clients what you're doing. But then if you have an educate, if you attach a bit of education towards it it's not too bad really yes yeah, it? if you attach a bit of education but half the guys yeah i think to myself you're not giving anything to your client you're just doing <laughs> it in- it's it's welcome to the team it's them well, isn't it it's like yeah uh, <laughs> all spaces left yeah what, what, fair, what, i do the spaces left on my seminars but that's because there generally is a, a certain <laughs> amount <laughs> of room yeah. i've got to work with yeah so but that's the um, only the only time I'll do that. Space is left shit. It's um there's a there's a term for it. It's not it's I'll use this term, but it's not technically this, but it's scare tactics, isn't it? Oh, he's only got two. It must be he's really busy, and I've only got a couple left. They'll take on everyone in those two slots. <laughs> They'll take anyone and everyone that's at the be in them two slots, them yeah. 10 people will be on board. I do have a limit of clients that I work with because I've tested it and I've gone above that by about genuinely 17 above the limit I'm on now I was on and I couldn't handle it I couldn't give enough time for me and training I couldn't get my food down me I couldn't watch all my clients training I couldn't get to people as quick as I could do when I was at my limit number I did try it and I was like nope that's a cool I'll just as the numbers fall because I get my clients results so they leave (laughs) Uh, as they start to leave and move on I just don't take on anymore or I don't push my coaching services as much i just pull back a little bit because i'm not very salesy and i find you two are the same you know you get a lot of people that every single post at the bottom it goes dm me the words big batty 22 because they want a big ass in 22 uh in my dms and then that means it's like message me the word coaching if you want to change your body today (laughs) isn't it it's 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 just it's It's like um makes me fucking cringe when i see it bro yeah but at the end of uh what a post i did a couple of days i was like i genuinely would like to help some more people so <laughs> if you feel like what i've just wrote and written up there message me please because i'd like to hear from you and then there's my website link that's ba- I, I go straight to the point i'm like so w- i'm looking for would you yeah okay cool <laughs> i don't want to like yeah. message me the words you see everyone doing that why are you doing that be a bit different yeah. it just drives me mad those so business mentors, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, must be. Um, I saw this earlier as I was driving back. I quite like this. Must do's in building muscle. The things you must do. 
because this is hard because when people go oh you must do that you always, you can always go well, you don't have to do anything but i think easy. there are but i think there are some musts easy okay go on then train fucking hard <laughs> what can you please um el oh, elaborate on that please you must make sure that you must elicit a certain amount of hypertrophy during a session. You sound like an Instagram coach. Can you get off, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the one the number one thing you'll see of everyone, and and it generally happens to the natties. You'll get a lot of natties that get called out, and it's like they just know how to fucking train. Yeah. The reason they look good in their natty is because they know how to fucking train. Yeah, and they've been you know? or they've been doing it for a very long time, and that yeah. they've just yeah. been doing That's both. It. Yeah. Yeah. Too many people just don't put the intensity in the gym. Then they go, I'm not getting results. It's like okay, I've so seen, so tra so so train to to hurt hurt your body. Paramount. Not even necessarily hurt. Well, it is, isn't it? It's causing trauma. You've got to cause yeah. some trauma. Yeah, I don't want to scare people, but yeah, fucking yes. go. Yeah. Yes, you have to basically. What about you, Joe? Must do's. You have to do. Um well, you could just follow up with demand for the other word. So he's just talked about demand. You could talk about. Well, you need to replenish. Supply, supply and demand. Yeah. So yeah, yeah exactly. Like you can't. Well, I, I always use the analogy as putting diesel in a petrol car. You can't fuel it wrong. You can't. You can't fuel it with what, with the opposite of what it needs. That's yeah. that's what I was trying to say. Like if you, yeah, okay, don't get me wrong. You could hit three, four k a day, and. Yeah, no doubt you will put on a little bit of size because you'll be getting all the trace protein, but you will not be optimal at all. No. Far, far from it. Yeah, so feeding it and feeding it and challenging it. So if you've challenged it hard enough, if you've trained as hard as Sammy says, but then you don't. And this is the annoying thing is you could track, oh, mate, it's almost fun. It's the most enjoyable part of our lives, man. It's the pinnacle of each and every part of my day is training. When I drive to the yeah. gym, I'm singing like a maniac. I cannot wait. I walk in so happy, so chirpy. I walk out so happy, so chirpy. Just get that. Do, that is easy. It's like, yeah. yes, it's like fucking get in. And then I'll go like, oh, so I've got to spend another 23 hours eating optimal, have I? Whew. And that's the hard bit for a lot of people, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't know. I, I do think the training is hard for a lot of people. Oh, no, no, of course. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. 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 Well, I've got to do more than 10 reps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. Now, on, on, on the flip side, then, what have you heard as the biggest myths in putting on muscle and training? You've got to eat within um, 20 minutes to finish when you finish your training. The anabolic yeah. window. The anabolic window, boys. Yeah. The exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> oh, this is very it is very important. Honestly, Honestly. you you boys are gonna you you boys are gonna probably gonna cringe by how did you do it and why would you do that? But I would train at 7 a.m., 6, 7, 8 a.m., finish at 9, 10. I would not eat a speck until 4 p.m. I'd break my fast at four when I was on prep. I just how I manage my food, I'd eat between four and ten o'clock at night. And I got to where I did. I didn't do it every day, but I did it majority of every day. Um yeah, but that, uh, and, and, and there you go. That that's 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 busted that myth completely. Yeah, yeah. I used to make strength gains training faster than rolling. Yeah, but that so. Yeah, what about um? I hate this myth. Well, is it a myth? You just got to walk. You got to walk ten k a day. Ten k yeah. steps a day. What is it with yeah. steps? Why is that an in thing now? Really big. What do you think? Really this is just the. It's just the neat, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's also the people that try and swap cardio for steps. I'll, I'll, I'll pull up a message right. I had on a DM yesterday. Sure. Um, and someone, a lovely lady, I'm sure, and we didn't really have that much of a long conversation uh, for obvious reasons. She messaged me this. Hi, Matt. I hope this finds you well. I'm wondering if you would be able to help me if, if at all possible. You mentioned in the week regarding steps, I, quotation marks, think, or how I understood it was that we should be should be doing 10,000 steps per day as a standard, not including running, day-to-day -day activity, housework, etc. Have I got this right or am I getting the dumb award of the year? You're not at all. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you, blah, 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 blah. So I put, who said that we should be doing 10,000 steps a day? That was my answer. She went, well, no one as such. It's the government guidelines, dot, dot, dot. 
my reply is it <laughs> is it her reply i thought i thought it was i could be wrong that's the end of the conversation so i think following myths is also a pet peeve of yeah. mine yeah. it's like no one has any idea no one knows anything they are no, just they... they are just assuming things i've got to do 10k a day who told you government guidelines is it i don't know why did you say government guidelines then yeah it's just all the farce it's all bullshit you just hear this all the time someone will get someone in wicked shape and yes. then they'll go how did he do that and it was, he did this and then that whole thing becomes the baseline for every yeah. person who wants to coach someone yeah there was a bodybuilder back in the day i forgot his name really My old coach, school Go on. The, the the double t4 guy yeah I was on double T4 doing an hour's cardio with 20,000 steps a day. Yeah, that's a lot. Well, I was, I was very similar to you. And then I had uh, an hour and a half of Stairmaster and 16,000 steps a day. So very similar to you. Mm. Very similar. But um, I've, I've never once track stepped. There you go. Mm. There you they go. cut them. They uh, cut them, didn't they? Yeah, well, there you go. It's like, yeah, it's like go on, go on, yeah. ask that, go and ask Arnold. Do you think he counted with Fitbits back then? You know, did did, did he did every I step? Did every single step. He was like one, two, three, four. As he was walking like down the street. <laughs> no, he didn't. Did he? He just did the same stuff. And then when results didn't happen, he just upped it. And when yeah. results didn't happen, he just upped it. It's kind of like it is yeah. that basic and it's that simple. We can't do that anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah, Jay Cut Jay Cut done a whole video on it where he was like, I don't like people that track steps. He's like, he said to me, he went, I always got in the best shape just doing an hour stairmaster. Yeah. He, he said, I think people use steps as a as a way of not pushing hard enough on cardio. Well, that's for sure. Because there you go. Because I thought ten thousand steps was enough, and I'm thinking that's just being a basic human being, isn't it? You lazy twat. <laughs> it's just like walking to the shop a couple times and and living a life. That's what. It's like having, I said this on my Instagram the other day. It's just like, I would class normal activity, you know, a walking 10,000 steps is roughly my, a normal activity for a human being, I believe, roughly. You should be walking around that amount. You know, when you have sex, when you walk up and down the stairs, do you then count that as, I've walked up and down the stairs, times six. That's a PB. Yay, I've had sex six oh, times. Oh, yeah, you, you, That's a PB. You, you gotta make you got to make sure you turn on your your activity status when you fit that first. Yeah. I'm sure that is there a sex one? There isn't even a sex one, is there? It's terrible. It's hit. It's hit. It's hit. It's hit. Yeah. <laughs> just, put, just put it as the electrical. We still need to get laid, Matt. Hey? You still need to get laid, bro. Yes, I do. You're right. Um <laughs> I'm gonna did you think I was gonna disagree? No way. No. Um, we cannot disagree. <laughs> yeah. Uh this is a good one. Yeah, <laughs> mate, I cry myself to sleep every night. Right, only three sups for the rest of your life. What would you choose? Only three supplements for the rest of your life. What would you choose? I think I've only ever used three. Really? I don't use a lot of sups, man. Go on, then. shoot. Not that guy. Protein. Not that guy. I'm not that guy. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not hating on whoever is that guy. I'm just saying I'm not that guy. I'm, I take I'm, loads. Yeah. No. Well, no. It's good if you can. I think it's mostly just because of cost, really. I've mate, it, costs, it costs an arm and a leg, mate. It's disgusting. John, John's flying to Dubai now, yeah. and he gave me all of his sup need stuff. Get it. So in. my, oh mate, I've got so much shit, and it's awesome because it's all really good health based supplements. So like supplement needs is an amazing brand. Yeah, very good. And and I've got all of their shit. Um, and but if I was to pay for that, yeah, that would have cost me a bomb. I'm talking that, like yeah. pot, the, like the CV stack is like 39 quid, and it That's and then you got the different stack is like 50 odd quid, and it's like and then because I just had to recently buy the thyroid stack because of yeah. everything that went on with my thyroid, yeah. Um, so I bought the thyroid stack and and now I've got that and the Systole Max from uh, yeah I've got loads of shit out there but I would never really ever buy that myself. So have, you, would, found, have you found the thyroid supplement? I've only been on it a week. Have you but, found, um, feel change different anything? Yeah, I do. I do actually feel oh. I feel good. I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna have to take my bloods again in three months. 
just to make sure that something's happening because my TPA is literally on the fucking very end of the scale, like the highest. So, yeah, my my th my thyroxide, thyroxide, yeah, yeah, anti, what is it? Th uh, per peroxidase antibodies. Isn't it weird how you've got a gland in your in your throat that controls your metabolism? Yeah, my body doesn't seem to like it at the moment. So that's it's strange. Fun. It's like I don't know if I told you that's that's what actually came back with me. It was uh, I've got like a underlying autoimmune disease. Really. Yeah, so that's what came back. So your TPA, so all my free T3, TSH, and, and T4 came back fine. Wow. Because I started to really worry about, like, uh, it was just, you just feel like lethargic, you want to sleep all the time. And I started getting just a slight tinge of yellowing on the nail. Mm. And, uh, and it hadn't been there before. And I thought it was residual tan from my show. Yeah. And then it didn't go away. And I was like, this is, this is fucking weird. So I got my blood done because obviously blood pressure started going up and down and, and it, I just didn't feel right. You know when you just don't feel right within yourself. So I got, I went to A&E &E and they were fucking useless. Um, so I just got a Medichex done and um, it came back with my TPA, my thyroid uh, peroxidase antibodies, which are the highest end that you can get, like bad. Oh. And um on Medichecks anyway, apparently when I spoke to the GP, so it actually says on Medichecks that I, sh I should go to my GP because of the, the results. But apparently my GP said that they weren't high enough. So I wouldn't see me. Um, so I've literally got to rely on either self-medication <laughs> if if this doesn't work. Or no, Matt. <laughs> it's disgusting, bruv. It's, it's worrying. Yeah. I've literally got, like, I cannot thank callum enough like he i'm not he i'm not even coached by him he's just a friend and the, a friend that i've become friends with through working yeah. with him and on in warsaw but he was so he just he said what what have you done when i was in a and &E? and i sent him uh, everything he said get your bloods done send me them i'll have a look and then he said just use the the sup needs stack it should clear you up and then we'll take get your bloods done in Three or four months and then uh, uh we'll go from there and see what it says yeah, but yeah basically i've um yeah the the antibodies in me do not like my thyroid so i've got a perfectly functioning thyroid that is being attacked by myself isn't that mad? what <laughs> that wrong with that? i suppose that's autoimmune right it's what chris bumstead had but i think yes his, his digestion is, isn't it oh was it liver is this I can't no, it was what it was, but like he had a lot of water retention, didn't they? So it would be kidneys. Yeah, yeah, it was kidney. One of the two. Is it? Um, but yes, I can't. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> scary times to live in. You know, in a world where you have paid into the NHS for so many years and they don't worry about. I got to pay for my inhalers as well. I think that's pretty bad. That's really bad. I, I have to. So. I have to pay to breathe, boys. Yeah. <laughs> It it's okay i'll overindulge on food become morbidly obese and then uh in turn you know create type 2 diabetes and then i'll have all my insulin given to me for free yeah isn't that good nice. isn't that good i was born with asthma but i gotta pay for it this is a good question it's actually really good <laughs> you all stand on stage who wins well us us three. I'm assuming that's what it means. You all stand on stage. Who wins? I don't know. I don't think right. I've seen much of it. Right now, is it. right now, you both are Sammy, loose. I <laughs> Sammy, I haven't seen any of you. What's your What's your Insta? Ooh, go on, boys. Why don't you just pull them up, bring them up to the screen so people watching can see what you look like? You're fine. I've got my phone flashing in my face because it's so dark in here. I'll try to brighten it up for you. So stick the light on. That with the light is on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh god! This was me. This is very moody. Uh, an hour before Southwest. I stay there. This is gonna be fun. I'm gonna pull my photo up now. We'll put and then Sa and then Sammy can judge. Is that most muscular you're doing? Uh, you guys go against each other though. No. No. You would have beat me. I thought <laughs> you'd have still beaten me. <laughs> Oh, I'm so bad at bodybuilding. I'm just going to give it a good go. Just trying to find my pick. 
Right. Okay. Right, okay, you're going front lap then. <laughs> this is good. This is fun. I haven't got any of my front lap. Is your oh, girlfriend behind you, Sammy? Yeah. She can be another judge then. You can both judge. She's going to say... She, no, she's not. Look at the legs on that kid. He's like 12 years younger than me. She's going to be though. I don't know. I haven't got any front lats on my ground. Sorry. Okay. Would you like to judge us too? Um, bring it up again. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's quite tight, isn't it? No, it's not. I look at his legs straight away. Depends what you're going for. If you was going to say more of a classic look, I'd say you, Matt. But yeah, he's got slightly better. Why would you, why, yeah, why would you say that then? Looking at those two photos, what do you? Why do you look at me and go, okay, that's a slightly more classic look? I'm trying to look at quite a waist and sweep your quads. Uh, oh yeah. But then, but then, um, Joe's got a lot of thickness, mm. and and he's got a really good conditioning. Yeah. Not that your conditioning weren't easy, just slightly up on it. What did you do for your legs, Joe? Tell me a secret. How can I get cut legs? Um, Come on, just give me the secret. To be fair, I'm, I'm a very heavy squatter. Like, I've squatted since I was young. Like, everyone says you don't really need it, but yeah. I personally feel as if it's a complete staple. I, th- I was hoping you could say like slim, Slimming World or something, but okay. I mean, I did that as well. Okay. I've got like, that's probably one of the best ones that I've got. Oh, oh a side shotty thing. Yeah, you're, you're cool, aren't you? You just look at you. Look at your little blonde flowing lock. Just to the, oh, look at that. <laughs> I think you boys had me in condition, but. I wasn't very conditioned at all, really. You was more conditioned than me, man. I saw, we, I saw you butt ass naked next to me, bro. Yes, you did. Don't ever forget it. I think from the from the front we was equal condition, but from the back your glutes and hands were a lot uh, just a bit sharper than mine. Maybe just a bit, yeah. No, I'm glad you went just a bit because I think only just a bit wasn't very. Yeah, but your second show they were sh- they were sharper than mine. Yeah. The second uh, show they were. I reckon I would. Who do you reckon? Come on then. Who do you reckon would come first? Ask girlfriend. Is she still in the room? How tall are you, Joe? Five four. Oh, really? Wow. That's why he looks so fucking wham. He's a midget. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like five, eight and a half. I'm five, ten. Eleven. Yeah, man, five, I'm, eleven. I'm tiny. You need to go two, twelve, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm, You're not tall enough for I a think class. then I was about 78 and a half on stage. Yeah. See, that little stick, man. He's thick. Because about what one seventy-eight at that height, with that conditioning, he's really good. You got some thick-ass legs. I'm, I'm, dense. I've always been quite lucky. My legs have always come in first. Yeah, always. I mean, you vouch for your squatting because of that. Do you think? In my last show, I was eighty-one point five. So it shows you how much muscle, muscle he's carrying on that. I was eighty. Muscle. I was eighty-three at my second show. Just a bit, yeah. In that weird, so you're just like that, and then I'm about two kilos heavier because of my height, probably. In the yeah. it's like. Um, yeah. Last question. Go to cheat meal. So, so, if you did have a cheat meal, what would be your go to cheat meal? So, you've only let's say you only have one one a week usually in it, unless you're Sammy, you have seventeen, and so you've got like one opportunity now to pick your favorite meal. What would it be? It's always pizza. Is it? It's always pizza. Okay. Those of my family are Italian as well, so I just I do like I do like a pizza. I do oh, like pizza. a pizza. I like um so my go to my go to cheat meal, whatever, is an Indian takeaway or Nepalese, something like that. Nepalese, baby, please. Mm. Yeah, Indian boys. Easy. <sighs> God. To be fair, I did have a lot of kebabs on as an off plan. Did now. you? Chicken that's, kebab. That's a good off plan meal, bro. Yeah, you just got some nice, clean ass wheaty bread. You got some salad, a bit of chips if you want it, and then all that meat. Yeah, for damn sure. Yeah. So I, Indian, it's a tandoori, I, 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 I tandoori mixed grill. 
Yeah, I like pizza, but it just doesn't make me feel good after oh, I've eaten yeah, it. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> yeah. And it, and it, and it weird how we're not actually really that old, especially you, Joe. And it and you feel the difference in terms of foods. I remember when I was a little kid, I could eat anything, I couldn't care less. It didn't, it didn't do anything. Now, if I eat certain foods, I'm like, ooh, hang on a minute. Say that bit about me not being that old again. <laughs> well, you are almost <laughs> ancient, aren't you? No. It's good you got, got baby. Mate. It's good you got baby face, mate. You don't look your age at all. No, nah, cheers, bro. I got one of my mates. He's always saying, "Oh, did they have a colour TV back when you was young?" Yeah. <laughs> Love it. So, I think I look older than you. Nah, you don't. It could be facial your, hair though. Use your beard. Yeah. How old are you, Mark? I'm 28. Okay. I know. Don't, mate. Honestly, now. Shut Wait, up. You, how old are you? 23. Fucking hell. How old are you, Sammy? 37. <laughs> Stay. Oh yeah, that's that's okay, mate. You've, <laughs> you're like you're less than halfway to sixty. That's positive. I'm almost halfway dead. I was just looking at like that. <laughs> oh, I had this question. Uh, this this will be the last question. This is actually good. And someone brought this up. I don't know. Q- on a Q- <laughs> <laughs> I had a Q and A the other day, and someone said, "Would you find out if? Would you find out when, if you could find out when you die and how you die, would you find out? And I said, yes. However, someone replied back going, so if you found out you would drown on that day at that time, you would have to physically jump in that water and drown yourself, knowing full well what's happening. No, because surely when you find out, you would alter. Would you can't alter anything, can you? Because that will muck everything up. Have you not been in the multiverse? No, but, but you, if you're you thinking about it, everyone, <laughs> everyone has a everyone has a plan for life. Their life is already pre-planned. Part of your plan was that you were going to find out how you were going to die, so you would try <laughs> and divert from that, which in reality was your still your plan. It's still your plan anyway because it's already planned so, out. So whatever oh, you do, it's already planned. I like that. I like the way you did I, that. I don't know. I yeah. I wouldn't want to find out. You wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. Want to. No, yeah. I'd I'd live I'd live scared. Yeah. Like if if for if for example, okay, actually take it back. What about just the cause of your death, not time? So you don't know when it's going to be, just cause. That's terrible because if it was a car crash, you'd be like every car journey, you'd be like, this is it, this is my time now. I'm off. You <laughs> you 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 live life scared. You're gonna burn alive. But that's you'd be like. <laughs> but that's not too bad because if you're going swimming, you know full well, oh, I can relax, I can chill because I'm not going to burn alive right now. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If you're lying in bed, you're like, yeah, I'm pretty safe here. Yeah, maybe. Are you though? Are you though? But burning alive in bed is probably one of the easiest places to happen if you leave something coming. <laughs> like, statistically, statistically, statistics, statistics. <laughs> Currently, say that you, the likeliest place for you to burn alive is your bed. That's not, is it? it? No, that's what I'm talking about. You're probably well, not yeah. likely going to burn in bed, are you? It's not one of the likeliest of places. I still worry though, because yeah, every night, if you knew you was going to burn alive, every single night you'd be like checking the gas. You would pull the gas, the yeah. gas could go back. Is yeah. any, anything plugged in still? Yeah. Yeah, you would. It'd freak you out, mate. Mm. Yeah, what we got? What, what we got planned for the next rest of the week, boys? Have you got anything exciting? Anything new happening in the next couple of weeks? Apart from Christmas, obviously. Just got the seminar. Sweet nothing. A seminar. Oh, yeah, it's my uh, obviously. Seminar. Yeah, where where are you doing that? Uh, doing it at Stackhouse Gym, Rayleigh. Really. Are there any other slots? Do you want to do a bit of a promo here? You might as well, mate. Yeah, there is. There's, um, there's three slots open at the moment. Where, um, when, and what is it? Go. Your time to shine, so, bruv. So it's a posing seminar with myself as a host. Um, it's going to be for eight people at Stackhouse Gym in Rayleigh, and it's going to be between half past 12 and half past two on a sat- uh, Saturday the 18th, which is this Saturday. Um, and it's it's mostly geared towards uh, more advanced guys, guys that are, are, are at least an intermediate level or that know something about posing. But like there is a couple of guys that have said they want to come and just be a part of it as well. 
mostly because uh, I've developed a new sort of teaching method around um, how to get people to because all the all the posing guys now. <clears throat> I'm not going to say all the posing guys actually that's a bit uh but from most of the seminars that i see especially ones hosted by like pca and and those guys they're only going to teach you how to hit your court turns and your mandatory poses whereas i'm actually going to teach you how to flow so point to point footwork i call it and it, it revolves around like um setting up your footwork uh so that you can flow between your routines and things like that 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 mean mm -hmm. that that matters a lot. I found that tricky myself. Very, very making well, it myself, I'm like, uh, like. Uh, now, at times that I see someone hit a pose and their footwork, like if your footwork's fucked straight away, it, it's the pose ain't gonna happen. It's yeah. just gonna look dog shit no matter what. Because you almost set know. that 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 first step or that leading step sets you into the next pose anyway. So if that's off, yeah. you're stuffed. Yeah, and and it is a, it's quite a simple method that I'm, I can teach them as well. So it's not actually it's not going to be that hard to grasp for guys. Yeah, uh, it does require a certain amount of flexibility, but um, it should be a fun time, man. It should be a good time. Mm. I love the seminars. I think I've done over ten of them now. So yeah, yeah, they're always they're always good. They're How always do you find good. talking in front of a uh, group of people? Yeah, love it, man. I love like, it. Like, well, the thing is, when you when you're posing in front of one or two people in their pants, and then it's no different to getting eight to ten you know the the the, the difference is is you've just got to try and make sure that you give everyone yeah. the same amount of time so that because there there's some guys obviously that get and some that don't and you just have to manage that as best as you can but um yeah it's gonna it's gonna be a good session yeah. brad's actually come into it how is he yeah i've taught him to um suppose last year and he's his routine was amazing well obviously I, <clears throat> I think he could be, uh, yeah. But some guys get it and some get it, you know. And yeah. Brad, uh, Brad was the first guy that ever gave me goosebumps in a posing studio. Oh, cool! Like we, he, I do, he, I do he, feel as if some people do just have a natural elegancy to their posing. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, some people are just gifted with it. About posing. Hey. Okay. I'm actually going on another podcast about posing with two other poses. Oh, are you? Yeah, you know Brambleby and the classic ghost. No, do I'm I? Not. Should I? Yeah, you did know. Classic that. ghost was um, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I could be yeah, against Leon, him, I'm pretty sure Leon. Leon was at our Southwest one. Yes. No. I no. Think. No. He's wearing green trunks at our show with me and Sammy. He won my class. Yeah, he won your class. So yeah, that I got chatting to them. Um, in the old DMs and that, and they do one called the Flowcast, and it's all about posing. That's good. So they've asked me to jump on there, so I'm going to there jump on. Yeah, that's perfect. That's what you love doing. You can tell if you get goosebumps from doing some work, you know you're in the right thing. You know you're doing the right thing. You know that. You know I that. um, I don't know what my thing is, but I oh, get goose. But I, I don't know what my thing is, but I get goosebumps when I make people feel good. You're an entertainer, bro. I'm an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you're entertaining as fuck. It's a great word for calling me a prick. Oh, it's fine. It's good. Oh, yeah. um, it's do, you know what, do you know what? Do you know what new things happened to me this week? Go on. I've stopped. This sounds fun, really fun pathetic. Yes, I have finally. Uh, I've quit biting my nails. I, I need to do that. Have you only, have you done it for a week? Wait. Because so that's looking... not quitting. That's just a week. How is it? I've stopped. <laughs> Shut up. Um, and they look substantially better. They're substantially stronger than Let's before see. in one week. I'm not going to show you. Go on. Go um, on. No. Prove it. Joe, do you bite your nails? I do. I've bitten my nails since I was day dot. Day dot. Yeah. And it's been seven days. Do you know what? what? Do you wait? What's, your, what's your reasoning for biting your nails? Thank you. Great. This is good. This is very good. Now, through my entire life, I've tried, haven't I? Oh, I've tried. Mum asks, how's your nail biting? Oh, I'm back to bite my nails. Obviously, I didn't care about not biting my nails. Yeah. I didn't I didn't care about if I wanted to stop or not. I actually want to now, and that's why I've quit. But I've only been doing it a week, so I haven't quit. Um, that's why I've stopped biting my nails. <laughs> Let's just, we're gonna look at him on every podcast now if it goes. Uh, <sighs> yeah. Uh <laughs> told you. <laughs> 
the reason the reasoning behind them i'm fed up and i'm in a really good habit a habit i read a book called atomic habits you ever read that oh i've one, one of my friends is reading it at the moment it's very good and and there's a there's a section on that called habit stacking and i'm in such a wicked moment in life at the moment where i'm like i'm out knocking these things that i'm just very very productive and i just thought i woke up one morning going this is a new habit i want to kick wicked i'm gonna get a new habit and that's the habit of not biting my nails i was like boom so what you get a new habit to counter that one yeah so you, you have it habit? see habit stack so it's like a reward system like a dog like a dog would get a click and uh, don't bark, click, sweet, whatever. Um, for me, I just do things that I enjoy. So I will, I know it's real simple. I know it's a little bit weird, but I'll, instead of biting my nails, I'll chuck a piece of gum in my gob and chew that. And I'm like, okay, I've got a little bit of a sweet thing now. And that refers to not biting nail. So I get that. And then over time, I don't need to chew gum anymore. And I can then, I won't have both. I don't, I'm not relying on chewing gum. And now I'm not biting my nails. Okay, fair enough. You don't have to do gum. You could do something you just like doing. I just thought, I oh, know, I'm just going to stuck a piece. I'm just going to stick a piece of gum in my gob when I decide. Not, you know, when I go, ah, oh, gum. That's how I do it. I go, I'm picking at them or I'm looking at them like, oh, gum. It just works. So. Yeah. Do you think that's part of your, because uh, when you go, you go through an all fixation stage, do you think that's still part of it? I, I am fixated on oral things. Uh, I don't know. I have no idea. Because if, if it's the fact that gum oh, solves I got it, yeah. that problem. Yeah, potentially. I didn't even think about it like that, but you have a good, you have a fine point. Obviously, I've picked, instead of sticking these in my gob, I stick something else in the gob instead of. Yeah, Why did yeah. you do that? I didn't at all. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> you could be in. I didn't at all. I think you're dreaming <laughs> again. You're job. dreaming about me doing it again. Shush. Um, I mean, Sammy, you're the one. That, there we go. There we go. You can't forget that one down there. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so that's that's this week. My 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 thing. I've kicked. I've kicked by my nails. Done. Well done. At the park. And you're going to start today as well. Okay. Well, we can I'm actually. I mean, I haven't got anything to bite because I've done them all earlier. So yeah, it's a good place to start. A great place. So there's another there's another one as well. I've forgotten the yeah. actual name about this method of kicking bad habits, but it's it's basically um it's a, like an account. Oh, it's an accountability partner, I think it's called accountability partner. And what that is is um let's say you and your girlfriend, Sammy. Let's yeah. say if you said I've got to do 20 minutes of cardio every single day, if I don't. I have to send you online banking. I have to send you 50 and you have to make it a big money. You have to make it a lot of money. You can't know. I'll send you a quid. If I don't do my cardio, you've got to say, I've, I have to send you a hundred pounds every single time I skip my 20, 20 minutes cardio. You never skip. You never skip the, the cardio ever. Well, in. It's yeah. um, negative reinforcement. Is that, is that what it is? Negative reinforcement. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I work. It's, it's the exact same as, like, how, as how you teach like a dog to do tricks they yeah. do something good you feed them yeah um is that no that's positive reinforcement that's po that's positive so oh, what okay. so what you're telling is Sammy, if he doesn't do it yeah then something bad how do you both we'll, we'll finish on this topic because i'll be i've kept you both far too long how do you work better in life do you work better off positive reinforcement or negative personally i work better on negative reinforcement so if someone if someone said to me, if you don't do that, you're going to look shit on stage. I'd rather that than someone say, keep doing that. You're going to look great. Oh, yeah. I'll yeah. definitely put it on negative in that case. You know what I mean? I want to be told, yeah, negative a million percent, personally. Um, when, yeah. I'm in the gym, when I'm in the gym, I, I'm I, training. I would before. rather... Go on. I, I would rather be told that something is going to happen if I don't do it, rather than be told you'll get this if you do it yeah yeah like when i'm when i'm training with someone i i don't hate it i, I appreciate it because they're there to support me but i don't like it when they go you're doing so well or, or uh you're so strong or not like many people yeah. say that <laughs> not many people say that but when they say um something real positive about me i i it doesn't do any i don't get a boner i don't get excited at all i'd rather say i'd rather hear come on you weak bastard get fucking lifter you can't you're weak 
Lucas yeah. Bass. That's what I want to hear. Hey, you get boner from that though. Him grunting in my ear, I do. Yeah. Oh. Gotcha. Talk, um, talking about people grunting in your ear. When are you coming down, Matt? I know, mate. Oh, you're grunting my ear for that. So I'm up in Brum tomorrow. Oh, yeah. I'm going back up to Birmingham tomorrow. He's coming then, down in September as well. This is no, you're both. I was coming to see both. This is me linking the two. Yeah. Um, so I want to be a stat, I want to get up there, park my ass a couple of days, and then I'm gonna traipse down, and then when I'm finished, I can go back up rather than Devon, London, Birmingham, Birmingham, London, De- none of that rubbish. That's what I'm gonna do. And I want to video some video like some good YouTube episodes yeah. with you both that'd be wicked like real nitty just like day in the life having fun and training a bit of food like q a bits and just hey eh? watching harry potter oh Come on. won me over mate have you seen it, um yeah. fantastic beasts the episode of the trailer i watched the first one i haven't seen any more have you seen the trailer for the third one dumbledore's i, I didn't see the second one no about the trailer for the third one no, I haven't seen it. No, haven't you? No, that that you. If I'm honest, mate, the second Fantastic Beasts, I wasn't a massive fan of. It was okay, but it wasn't it wasn't the best at all. You ain't missing much. Ain't missing much at all, lads. I'm gonna let you go. Can I just before you go? Hmm? That's a sweet North Shore jumper you got on there, bro. How do you know North Shore? Well, how weird is this? Hey, look at that. I wonder why. Have we both been to Nuki recently? Yeah. I'm going back, bro, next year. When it you're gonna have to a million we have to go to and train at Spikes, the wicked gym there. Yeah. We we me and me and the other half have been there twice. Um yeah. our friends came over with us last time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're gonna do it all again because yeah. we just love it down there. So yeah, it's, it's so good, isn't it? I sort of remember when I saw you uh, you with your, your missus. Uh, taking a picture in that car park and Domino's is opposite. I was like, I know exactly where he is, man. He's, li- yeah. he's not even looking at his girlfriend. He's looking at the pizza. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Nuki's wicked, man. It's, um, I was down there because I was I was dating someone for a, a, quite a while down in, and she lived in um, St. Hostel. So on the south coast of where Nuki is, about half an hour drive. And um, I was there all the way through the winters and stuff. And What was it like in the winters? Because we always got told it's, dead mate honestly no life at all you know tumbleweeds on a western movie it's like yeah. that it's all yeah. it's like that your random seagull one pasty shop will be open maybe one ice cream shop it was oh, yeah it was it's, it's a different world it's like you walk there you're like where am I? what what is this and then six That's months funny. later six months later you're like whoa too busy <laughs> yeah because yeah. we, we was we was actually saying like we'd love to move down there but yeah. then everyone tried to put us off by saying there's no work like outside of um the summer so. of course especially with the world that we're living you with coaching online and and everything yeah. that you're doing but um yeah cornwall's yeah, cornwall's nice but it's i don't know if it's a place you want to live or go to on holiday you enjoy it because you go there and you, you know you look forward to going if you live there would you be so would you love it that much you know that's what i sometimes yeah. think yeah i don't know you never know do you? you haven't come to essex yet you tell me if you think it's better I'm a I'm a city boy for sure, personally. Are you really? Yeah, I love. I've, of course, I love the I love new. I love, I love the beach and seaside and stuff. But if I could if I could pick between the two, personally, I would live in a city environment and travel to and go on holiday in beaches and and enjoy that sort of place because of opportunity. Gym's five minutes. Pizza's two minutes away. Cinema's ten minutes away. That's there. Yeah. Supermarkets there. And Nuki, mate, I'm not kidding. It took us 45 minutes to get to the supermarket. How close is it for you, boys? It's literally like three or four minutes in a car. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not about this life. I'd, ra- I'd rather that. Yeah. yeah. yeah Always sure. Like, Nuki's not even the biggest. Nuki's quite small. Mm. But yeah, still, I've got Tesco two minutes away. From me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's why. And like, like, like I said, if you if you live in these holiday destinations, that's why sometimes I think I'd love to move abroad. I'd love to live in Spain, but when I'm there, would I not? You know, I would just take advantage of it and just live in my house and just coach everyone on my laptop, just as I am now. But if I can travel there, I'll enjoy it far more. Maybe. I think it would be wicked if you could coach online and make a living. It's Poland. Really? It's so cheap, bruv. What's it like? So cheap. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. It's a bit, 
it's a bit Call of Duty vibes, but that's what I thought. A bit like um, Chernobyl. <laughs> yeah, like concentration camps, like uh, like a. Like it's a, just the um, the, the barbed the wire everywhere. <laughs> no, it's just the buildings. You know, it's just yeah. the buildings. They're just made a bit grim, aren't they? But yeah, but like I, like everything's grey. Yeah, everything's like grey and just brick and flat and yeah. yeah. But I mean, generally it was nice, and their food's way fresher than what we get over here, and mm-hmm. everything's like really nice. Everyone seems pretty healthy, and I think to their core, they're a friendly bunch. I think it's just more their nature that yeah. they come across a bit. Well, but, I, I really I, liked them. Man. Yeah, I used fun. to I used to work with a Polish chap at the at the gym I used to PT at. And um, he was such a lovely guy. And they just take care of their own. They've got, you know, whenever there's a Polish community in the local city, they're all together. Yeah. And that's great. Yeah, that's, you know, um, so they do look after their own, which is good. Yeah, they looked after me as well when I was there. I didn't get any bad vibes. Maybe because you looked Polish. I don't look Polish. No, you don't look Polish. No, I don't. Well, I've got a mate that looks like a, po- a Pole. A Pole. Pole, the yeah. Roland Podolski. He, he, he looks like a Polish guy so much that he was doing a delivery job in London and he almost backed into someone. The geese went, fuck off back to Poland. And he went, I'm fucking English. <laughs> I love that. We talk about mate. <laughs> yeah. So far. We were him for not being Polish. So when he said it, we was like, oh. No way. What was it? Did he have a shaven head and wear white, black and white slasher trainers? He's got like piercing blue eyes and like really blonde hair that's oh. like, like yeah. flat top. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, lads, I'm gonna let you go. You got, you got to get a meal, Daniel. I've got some whey and oats now. Some, some yeah, protein, some steak and pasta. Oh, you lucky just... bastard. Yeah, but mine's gone cold. <laughs> oh, you've got. Oh, she's made your. Oh, you've got microwave it, mate. Easy. Yeah, yeah look, look. Blast she's found it. my mate. She's found my mate. But he's he's since shaved and grown a beard in this picture. So you're just gonna have to make do. But that. Do you reckon he looks Polish? Oh, for God's sake. Click on the photo and then do it. Yeah, yeah he does. <laughs> <laughs> his hair is really blonde as well. Like his beard's brown. He looks bald. He looks bald on here. He's through the there. He's bald there. Oh, is it? Okay. But usually he has like a blondie flat top and no yeah. beard. But, yeah. but looking wise, he looks well poor. Yeah. Right, lads, say you go say goodbyes. See you later, alligators. See you later, gang. Thank you very much for listening to, well, really, the first episode of Resident Nerds. This will be a weekly ting. So we will see you, or you hear us and see us next week. Thanks, guys. Ta-ra.